Hello, this is Chuck Carnivale, and it's my pleasure to provide this deep fundamental analysis on Flowers Foods utilizing the FastGraphs Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. The primary focus of this presentation is on the current or to determine the current valuation of Flowers Foods. In my way of thinking, valuation is a puzzle, and like most puzzles, there are many pieces. And I'm going to go through several pieces utilizing the resources available with FastGraphs. The first metric I'm going to look at here are adjusted operating earnings. The orange line on the graph here plots Flowers Foods operating earnings since 2002. The orange line is drawn as a valuation reference over this time frame utilizing a P-E ratio of 18.3. The essential factors that illustrate these valuation references are found in the color-coded section of the fast facts boxes here to the right of the graph. Consequently, at this time frame that I'm drawing here, the slope of this orange line is 18.3%. In other words, this line is increasing at a rate of 18.3%. But when I look at the operating results using earnings only here, there's a couple of things that immediately strike me. At the bottom of the graph, you have the change in earnings per year listed each year. And I want you to notice in 2002 and 2003, there were some really big numbers generated by this company. And you can see that earnings growth was pretty good, all even up through the, the Great Recession. But then as we came into calendar year, beginning of calendar year 2014, the end of 2013, I want you to notice that there was a flattening of operating earnings here, but estimates expect 2017 to pick up a little, followed by double-digit growth again in 2016. Now the next metric I'm going to add to the graph is a plotting of the dividends, also reflecting the dividend payout ratio. This is a plotting of Flower Foods dividends per share over this time frame. And this area below this indicates the company's payout ratio. If I scroll down here to the performance report, you can see that their payout ratio has steadily increased over the last several years. And it's currently in the 50 to 60% range. Part of that is functionally related to the fact that earnings growth has slowed down while their dividend has continued to increase. The next, I'm going to plot monthly closing stock prices onto this graph to illustrate valuation or how the stock is valued. This orange line represents a valuation reference line. And in this example, it's a P-E ratio of 18.3. Now, this is real world data here, meaning that you can see that the price has tracked earnings. And there were periods of overvaluation like we saw from 05 into 2008. Then there was some severe overvaluation in 2013 as well as 2015 be, before we had an ultimate correction. The next metric I'm going to add then is the calculation of the normal PE. And this tells a lot about how the market has valued this stock historically. The valuation reference line with the normal PE is drawn at a PE of 22.5. So anywhere I'm touching that blue line, it would be a PE ratio of 22.5. And what you see here is that the market has applied a premium valuation to this stock more often than not. However, as I change time frames, a couple of important things happen. The first thing I want you to notice is what happens to the earnings growth rate. I'm going to drop this down to a 12-year graph, and I want you to notice that the earnings growth rate now has dropped to 9%. So growth has slowed down, but of course that's also dominated by the very anemic growth we've seen over these last four years. Nevertheless, now we have a P.E. ratio of 21 as a normal P.E. And as a valuation reference, it's important to recognize it's not the number that's important. It's the number ish. So what we've seen so far is the market is applying a normal P.E. in the range of 20 for this stock historically. 20, 21, 22, those are all the same numbers in my way of thinking. But what this does do is give you a clear picture of periods of excessive overvaluation like we saw in October here when the P.E. was as high as 29 before it quote unquote reverted to the mean. And then coming into 2015 and ending in October, the P.E. rose again to over 29 
before we saw this massive correction in the stock price where the price fell from a high of 27 all the way down to 15 and actually below. The low for the um, year so far has been 14.35. Nevertheless, what I think is important here is we see a clear picture of valuation utilizing the normal PE when I'm using the operating earnings metric. But I never stop with operating earnings. FastGraphs offers four additional earnings options as well as, and by the way, I'm using the new version of FastGraphs, which will be launching hopefully the second week of January. And we've added a couple of metrics. So current subscribers, you're not going to have these available as of yet. But basic subscribers will see the advent of free cash flow and premium subscribers We'll see EBITDA and EBIT as well as total cash flow added to the FastGraphs research tool. But next, I'm going to go ahead and look at diluted earnings or gap earnings here, which will give me another perspective in this valuation puzzle. And what we see here with gap earnings is kind of an interesting relationship in that we had the surge in gap earnings in 2013 where they increased 65 percent. And again, we see this normal PE here in the 20s utilizing gap earnings, but we also see more correlation between price and earnings at this normal PE for Flowers Foods over this time frame. But once again, the important value of looking at these different metrics is we once again see a period where this was the announcement of the lawsuits and of course also coupled by some slow growth in earnings here, slowing growth in earnings where the price became temporarily undervalued. They have subsequently settled the suit and this article is a follow up to the article I published in September and then we've had this reversion to the mean, if you will, of the stock price when looked at from the perspective of gap earnings here. Since this is a dividend paying stock with an excellent long term dividend record currently yielding 3.2 percent, I'm now going to turn to operating cash flow to take a look at the company. And what I'm really looking for here is another valuation reference as part of my puzzle, but I'm also looking at dividend coverage using the first version of cash flow's operating coverage. And the dividend here is well covered and we again see the idea that you had overvaluation even relative to operating cash flows, significant undervaluation that is moving back into alignment. For basic subscribers, you'll soon have the ability to look at free cash flow also. So let's take a look at Flowers Foods now utilizing free cash flow. Now, once again, we discover a normal PE. And again, this is a reference. So it's just simply trying to determine what PE the market has, or in this case, price to cash flow, free cash flow, the market has applied to the stock. And we see that this stock has traded at a, at a 22 price to cash flow or higher for much of this time frame. If I extend this time frame out, and I want you to notice the earnings or the cash flow growth rate has changed again, we see the normal at 23.4. So the point is we're seeing a, a, a mid 20s normal P price to cash flow for this company over this period of time. I think it's important that free cash flow did drop during the Great Recession and it fell again in fiscal year ending in December of 2011 where the dividend was not covered by free cash flow. However, operating cash flow, as I showed you earlier, it was covered. Now, one of the other features will be available only to premium subscribers, which we're labeling as intrinsic value correlations, is to look at EBITDA, or earnings before income taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And with the EBITDA metric, we're applying a normal price to EBITDA as the valuation reference. And what's important about this is that this really does give us a clear picture of how the market has normally valued this stock on EBITDA. And the correlation here is actually quite astounding. And we see that the average price to EBITDA over this 18 year time frame has been about 9.3. If I shorten the time frame, it's 9.5. If I shorten it again, it's 9.6. So again, it'd be somewhere between a 9 to 10 price to EBITDA turns out to be a pretty solid valuation reference for this company. Now, EBITDA growth is expected to increase about 2% for next year, followed by a 7% increase. So I can use the calculated feature here, which I could have done with all metrics. 
And now I have an idea that if I bought the stock today and it traded at approximately a 9 to 10 EBITDA by the end of 2018, I could expect to earn about a 10.6% annualized rate of return if that were to come to pass. These are what if scenarios, but one of the things that I feel is very important whenever I'm considering investment, I want to have some idea of what kind of return I might logically expect based on reasonable valuation metrics. Once again, I also want you to notice that, that EBITDA growth has changed as I run through these different time frames, but it's hovering around the 9 to 10 percent rate of change of EBITDA over the years. So that's been pretty consistent for this company. Now, another thing I like to do then is go into the forecasting calculators. And when I'm utilizing EBITDA, I'm going to look at the normal multiple, the normal price to cash flow multiple. In this case, it's 9.4. But I have a handy drop down here, which I think is very useful, is I can evaluate what the normal price to EBITDA has been over all these different historical time frames. And once again, I see somewhat, you know, the low side of 9.3 or 4, the high side of about 10, but I would call 9.5 or 9.4 a pretty solid valuation reference for Flowers Foods when I'm utilizing EBITDA. And again, with this, I can simply point to these future time frames and come up with another calculation that I would consider reasonable. So here I'm looking at about a 9.27% rate of return utilizing the 9.4 price to EBITDA metric. So at this point, what I'm surmising up to now is that based on these various valuation metrics, and there are others like EBIT and even gross cash flow that I haven't utilized, I would consider this stock reasonably valued today. I think it was significantly overvalued in, in the, by October of 2015. It became significantly undervalued, primarily as a result of the, of the event risk of the lawsuits, as well as the slowing earnings growth, as I talked about in the written portion of this presentation. And now it's, it's moved back into alignment after the lawsuit has been settled. So it's no longer undervalued like it was in September, but I would still consider this stock reasonably valued at today's. Now, in the comment section of my last article, there was some discussion about the fact that they've recently announced a buyback program. And there were comments about people who said, you know, they didn't like the idea that they were buying back their stock. And I'm a firm believer, I don't like to see stock buybacks when valuations are high like they were in, in 2015 here. But I do like buybacks when the company's stock price is cheap. So at this point, I thought it might be um, interesting and useful to move into the financial underlying numbers, or what we call fund graphs, and take a look at share buybacks for Flowers Foods. And I'm going to shorten the time frame here. And one thing I think that's very interesting is that if you look at 2015, they were actually increasing their share count. And this is during the period when the valuation was very high. However, if I go to quarterly data, and look at um, common shares outstanding over the last several quarters. As the stock became undervalued in 2016, they started reducing their count from 212 million shares to 206 and 207. So they, these are quarterly numbers here at this point. So the company is buying back shares when the price is cheap, and they were actually issuing shares. Um, not a lot, but they were slightly increasing their share count when prices were high, and I consider that um, reasonable and attractive. Next, I'd like to take a look at profitability a little bit because I consider that very important. So I'm going to take a look at Flowers Foods gross and net profit margins here. And one thing about companies in the food business like this, this is also true of a lot of grocery stores. They have pretty healthy growth margins, but their net margins tend to be relatively low. And I'm going to switch to a line graph here just to illustrate my point is that they're, they're net profit margins as well as growth profit margins have been staying reasonably consistent within a reasonable variation here. So the company remains profitable and that's, that's holding true even going into, um, in, into the quarterly data. So if I look at how their gross and net profit margins have gone through the end of the last quarter ending in September of 2016, a little bit of weakness 
during the last quarter, but their margins are staying in that, you know, roughly four and a half to five and a half percent range. So they, they their margins are remaining consistent. And I also like that. For the sake of brevity, I'm going to summarize this video presentation by focusing on the EBITDA metric that I looked at earlier. Flowers Foods is trading at a fair value, in my opinion, based on price to EBITDA of approximately 9.7 times. And I do want you to notice that this number changes as I change time frames, but it stays within that 9 or 10 percent range. And I consider the stock reasonably valued. Forecast growth going forward is um, not as good as it's been historically, but even without growth, this company with a 3.2% dividend yield and some pretty attractive um, um, you know, potential for recovery, as I discussed in the article, I think this stock is certainly worth taking a look at. Longer term, analysts are forecasting a 7% growth rate. I'm going to combine the near-term estimates with the long-term growth rate. And this would imply, if they're capable of doing that, some, something in the high nine, even low double digit annualized rate of return for this company at, at a normal nine, nine and a half to, to, I'll even call it 10 times EBITDA. So I like Flowers Foods here. I think the important lesson, the reason I wrote this article and followed up is to illustrate the value that you can find when you get an event risk. The company was overvalued, which made it vulnerable. The price re verted to the mean, if you will, and then the lawsuits came out and created an event risk, which drove the price even lower. And now we've, that the lawsuit's been settled, the stock has recovered, but it's currently sitting at a valuation that I think is at least sound, although no longer as attractive as it was a few minutes ago or a few months ago. Uh, this is Chuck Carnival saying thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.